everyone welcome back to my channel and for those of you that are new to this channel my name is Beth Cleary I'm so excited today because my daughter Gail will join me she is going to help us make some brownies it is one of our favorite snacks here at home so Gail let's show them the ingredients so here's our ingredients 185 grams of unsalted butter, 85 grams of plain flour, 40 grams of cocoa powder, 150 grams of golden caster sugar, and then I have here different kinds of chocolates. First is 185 grams of dark chocolate, 50 grams of white chocolate, and 50 grams of milk chocolate we also need some uh, walnuts this will be dependent entirely on how much you want to put in the brownies and also we decided we want some marshmallows in it as well so hello gail thank you for joining your mommy today in her channel hi guys everyone this is my youngest daughter and i would like to tell you that she is my editor so Whatever you see in my channel is all her creative idea. Anyway, let's go back to the brownies. So what is our next step, Anak? So the first step here is to melt the butter with dark chocolate over the boiling water. Okay, so let's do that then. So right now I'm just putting the butter into the bowl and then next would be the dark chocolate. So we just have a saucepan here with boiling water and I'm just gonna put this over the saucepan so that um, it'll melt and I'll just continuously stir it until it's all combined. So now that the chocolate's all melted, I'm just gonna let it cool down on the side and we're just gonna have to preheat the oven then. So while waiting for the uh, chocolate mixture to cool down, we're going to preheat the oven. Our oven is a fan so I'm going to Preheat it to 160 degrees. So, Gail, while the oven is preheating, we're going to prepare the rest of the ingredients. So, our next step is to sift all the dry ingredients together. So, that would be the cocoa powder and also the flour. But while I'm doing that, I just want to ask mom a few questions so you guys can get to know her a little bit better. <laughs> so, first one would be, do you actually enjoy cooking, Mom? <laughs> For us. To be honest with you, I'm I'm not a great cook, but I learned how to cook since I came over to Ireland. Because obviously I have to survive. When I was in the Philippines, my mother basically does the cooking for everyone she's a great cook she's Lola is very man. good <laughs> so anyway when i when i arrive in ireland i have to feed myself and i love food so i uh, made sure i learned how to cook my favorites really well like the pancit or the rice noodles or the adobo you know the pork with uh, vinegar and soy sauce so to answer your question, I love cooking for you because I enjoy seeing you happy while you're eating oh, the food that I made yeah. for you. So you know, even if she says she's a bad cook, she is actually a really good cook. Ah, like, you know, it's you always <laughs> everybody says that they always love their mom's cooking, and that's true. Like I do love her cooking, and like I know you said you like Filipino food; they're usually your favorite. Pero when they came into your life, how yeah. did that all change? Like, did you have to adapt or? Well, in fairness to Dave, Dave is not very choosy. You know, he eats whatever I prepare for him. But at the same time, he has no time, choice. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he, did, he doesn't have a choice. You know, sometimes he would uh, fancy Irish dishes as well. So I try to cater for that desire. So I kind of incorporate the Filipino and the Irish dish together. Say, for example, when I'm cooking adobo, I might have the mashed potato with it or, you know, 
it kind of blend them together and I think it it's working really well. Your ate and yourself, you're kind of leaning more now into Irish cooking, isn't it? Yeah, we are, yeah. yeah. Just, I think like with Irish cooking, it's a bit um, more straightforward. Yeah. Because in Filipino cooking, I feel like there's more like soy sauces yeah. and all that and all the yeah. spices. So yeah. it's easier to like keep up with the Irish food but with the Filipino since obviously all, probably all the recipes you have yeah. came from Lola and since we're not really yeah. with Lola at the moment she's back in the Philippines it's kind of hard to like get her recipes and yeah. yes. so Gail what's next then we're so to... we're gonna crack the three eggs into the bowl and while I'm mixing it mom will help me with the sugar then <laughs> now okay. I just get this out of the way This should be about ready now. So, so now we're just gonna put in the egg mixture into the cool chocolate and we'll fold it in. We'll try and not beat too much of the bubble sound, so you have to be gentle about this. So. Now we're just gonna fold it in until it's all incorporated very gently. So, yeah, that's it, nearly all incorporated. So, I'm gonna try and get the dry ingredients in. Yeah. So mum will chop the walnuts now, so it's bite sized. How much walnuts do you want? How much ever you want, like. <laughs> so ma, continuing with the questions while yeah. you're chopping. Yeah. Have you found any recent uh, restaurants that you want everybody else to try? Well, the fact that nearly everyone is a takeaway lately, yeah. what I found was a food truck. Probably everyone had watched about Pot Belly Cafe. It's located in St. Joseph's Community Center, Bishop's Water in Wexford. It's highly recommended. Their food is really tasty and it's good value for money. Yeah. We actually just had that for dinner today as well. Yeah. So <laughs> really shows that we do love the tacos there. Yeah. So uh, actually I have something to bring up. Mom's birthday is coming up soon. We're thinking about a week and a half. So how do you feel about turning thir uh, 30? <laughs> I'm actually feeling great because I found a new passion as everyone knows I started my YouTube channel now just recently this is my 50th year of existence so it's giving me happiness and it's giving me some focus in my life because I know you and Jessa you have your own life now, like you're moving to Dublin now soon. And I don't know when is Jessa going to move out of the house as well. Ah, she's so, talking about it as well. So, <laughs> so basically, <laughs> myself and Dave, they would be working away and I'd be working away. And on my days off, I wouldn't have anything to do. So at least I can, you know, dedicate my spare time on something that is relevant that's it basically i'm excited yeah. although sometimes you have the aches and pains because of the <laughs> <laughs> of the age and yeah. i always associate it with menopause but you know that's life mm. so looking forward to it so as somebody who's like you know experienced with life what would you what advice can you give me with just starting out with this new chapter mom well i i'm always telling you and ate that you should always uh, enjoy life, live uh, the moment, you know. Don't be worrying too much. Don't be stressing too much with something that hasn't happened yet. Mm -hmm. So live, live within the moment. Be present because you don't know if there's another day or, you know. Yeah, it's so very unpredictable. Just enjoy life, especially after the pandemic. Everyone feels probably that you know there, you can lose anything in an instant so just appreciate what you have and enjoy your family especially
Don't want to over mix it guys, just enough so that it's all evenly distributed. Just gonna put it into a non-stick, oh non-stick bowl. Yeah. You just wanna flatten this out evenly. Now that's done, ready to go into the oven. So the oven has been preheated to 160. This is a fan, but if it's not a fan, it has to be 180. 180 on that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Then you put it into the middle shelf, and that'll be about 25 to 30 minutes. Welcome back, guys. After the dinner, we normally have a cup of tea but it's only myself and Gail here at the moment. So we're going to try the brownies that we made earlier on. This is how it looks like. It's really yummy, we already tasted some of it. And also, uh, we're going to try the uh, Darjeeling tea that the girls gave me on uh, Mother's Day. This is a special tea. It is very popular. They said it is the uh, champagne. champagne of tea. Mm -hmm. So it's normally taken without milk, isn't it? Yeah, no milk, no sugar, no anything really. Just so, by itself. Yeah. Uh, so I'm really excited to try this. So. And then as we're enjoying our brownies and our tea, Gail will be asking me a few questions. Yeah, I've got a few questions here. More, uh, more meaningful ones, I suppose, so that since we're not busy making the brownies now, you can sort of think more about your answers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just hanging out with my daughter. So we'll pour the tea first game right yeah. before it becomes cold. Thank you. By the way, we're using this uh, lovely china. It's made here in fine porcelain, it's Royal Dalton. So it's lovely. I haven't really used this yet quite old though, like you've had this for a few years. Had this for a few yeah. years, but I didn't really use it before. Probably I didn't get the chance to mm. sit down like this before because just so busy working away when the girls were in college. So now I can enjoy my cup of tea. <laughs> sit back and relax. Yeah. Let's try this first. Sort of just like normal tea, but lighter. <laughs> yeah, it, it is very light, isn't it? I yeah. thought it would be stronger, but it's probably like they said, it's the champagne of tea, so that's probably how it tastes, like a champagne. Yeah. It's okay, so Gail, what do you want to ask your mommy? So yeah, um, before we take a bite out of the brownies. I will, I will anyway, while you're asking ask. me the question. <laughs> okay, so my first question would be, how was it moving to Ireland? Like, you know, leaving Lola and everybody behind, leaving yeah. me and Adidasa even yeah. when I was, I think you left when I was three years old, I yeah. think. I actually moved in Ireland in 2002. We were the first batch of foreign nurses to come over in the Southeast of Ireland. So we were the pioneer here, actually. It was so easy to go to, go to Ireland before we didn't even have to do any exams, any English exams. All we needed to do was to uh, submit all the requirements that the agency asked us to submit. And then when everything was submitted, like, you know, it was very quick then. And the uh, health board came over to the Philippines to uh, do some series of interviews and nearly everyone actually passed. They were under pressure with nurses during those times. And uh, yeah, and everything was sponsored. Our flights, everything, the documents and everything, they they uh, paid for everything. We didn't yeah. have to, you know, uh, use any of our money, except of course for like photocopies of documents that we needed to submit. So they were very accommodating. They were, yeah. And then uh, when I moved here in 2002, you were only two years old and your ate was like five or six. So I remember Jessa was uh, in school and Gail was only two years old and my brother brought me to the airport. So it's only myself and my brother. I didn't want the girls to come with me. I was a single mom then, you see. So I left the girls in the care of my mother. 
And uh, I remember Gail very clearly in my mind up to this moment. I didn't know any better. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't know I was going to see uh, Our transport was moving away from home and you were with your grandmother, with your Lola. So that was always in my head. You know, I was so sad to remember those memories. And every time I come home in the Philippines, because I take annual leaves every year, and it's so difficult to leave the girls. Jessa was nearly like a week before I leave the Philippines back to Ireland, my eldest daughter, she's already crying nonstop. As if she was about to be killed. Like, you know, that's how, <laughs> that's how desperate she was to, to want to join me here in Ireland. But I didn't want to bring them yet that time because I was afraid yeah. I, uh, I uh, wasn't sure how I'd be able to look after you on my own and I was working full time. Mm. So eventually, after five years, they themselves, especially Jessa, decided, Mommy, we have to come with you. Yeah. And that was a difficult time as well, you know, Gail, because you were with your Lola, with your grandmother, and it was very difficult for us, for her to yeah. be separated from you as well so i mean she came over here like was mm. it i think three months yeah with us she stayed here for three months and we came yeah. so after that she had to go and yeah it was they, very they, hard like they had to transition so i decided that when the girls are coming over i applied for a tourist visa for my mother so she came with the girls as well but she can only stay for three months so every three months she has to go home so that yeah. went on for a year like you know and then eventually we have to say like you know we cannot do this every three months it was very expensive yeah it was very taxing on all yeah. that so, you know, she's still, she's not, yeah. she wasn't a young woman anymore that time wasn't she yeah. traveling alone for her must have been really like mm. intimidating and tiring probably so. yeah it was a long flight like you know mm. so yeah um, you know like after you talked about the process i guess mm. like who were you living with when you started out here? Like, how did you find accommodation? Mm. Did you find like, did you find getting friends hard? Or mm. do you remember any of the other people who you came with? <laughs> of course, because uh, there was only a small group of us, and we all came in Ireland, and we were all collected from the airport, and they brought us to Waterford Regional Hospital. That's where we had our six weeks adaptation. Mm. There was already there were already apartments waiting for us. So each apartment, uh, each apartment accommodated three people, mm. three nurses. So that was our small group, and we became friends. We bonded. But then after the sixth week, they uh, brought us to different counties. Oh, they so, separated you guys? Yes, really? We got separated from each other. Oh. So that was another difficult time of our life here. Mm. Because we were only starting to bond. And you see, you were a small group of Filipinos living in a foreign land with no friends or family. Mm -hmm. And they became your family. And then suddenly, you have to be separated again. But anyway, I initially was sent to Kilkenny, mm -hmm. St. Luke's in Kilkenny, so that's where I worked for a year. Mm. But eventually, I asked for a transfer here in Wexford, and it was so easy during those times. I didn't have any problem at all, so I got my transfer straight away. And since then, I settled really well in Wexford. Yeah. And then you and Ate came then afterwards, yeah. and that's it, like, you know. And You've now it's always been... How many years now? Nearly 20 years since. Like what's the difference between working in the Philippines versus working in Ireland? Was there like a huge as a change? Nurse. Yeah, as a nurse, yeah. Yeah. Very big uh, difference because the system of nursing in the Philippines, where I used to work anyway, it was a very big private hospital. Mm. It's uh, functional nursing. So during the shift, there was a charge nurse, there was a medication nurse, and there was a uh, IV therapy nurse and you know it's functional everybody had different roles everybody has different roles whereas when I came here it was a primary nursing so it's like looking after a set of uh, patients and you'd be providing total care like you know you'd be giving mm -hmm. them uh, you'd be attending to their activities of daily living like helping them with their wash in the morning you'd be giving them their medication 
Mm-hmm. And at the same time, you'll be feeding them. You know, everything, you'll be doing everything for your patients. And then the shift is completely different uh, from where I used to work. In the Philippines, uh, when I was working as a nurse, we used to work eight hours shift, but that's like we only have two days off in a week. Whereas here, we, we work long days, three long days, three 12 hours shift, and we're off for four days. So. Mm. I know it's a long day, but at the same time, you have more days of like. Yeah, you can enjoy it, yeah. Yeah, you can enjoy and do other things in your life, not just uh, completely confined into your job, you know? Yeah. So, those are the two major differences, and I feel that here, nurses' opinions are more valued yeah. because uh, the doctors feel that. You're the one who's directly looking after your patients, that you know your patients better than them because you you are directly in contact with your patients yeah. every day, like, you know. So they value your opinion. Uh, they communicate well with you. They, you are part of a multidisciplinary team. So you participate. You feel like you're being valued your opinion is considered you know so yeah, you feel more accomplished as a nurse yeah yeah that's it like and then as a nurse you are you have the opportunity to do postgraduate yeah, courses yeah. you are sponsored like what i did i did a postgrad in diabetes care which i did for two years so those kind of things and there's a constant uh training that they provide and it's all free of charge like you know and of course the salary is so much better you can't compare the salary mm. in the philippines and your and the salary here of a nurse like you know it's way way better so would you say that you wouldn't have accomplished what you have now yeah. if you were still in the philippines if you didn't leave like yeah i'd say the quality of life that we're enjoying now wouldn't be the same yeah. if i'm still working as a nurse in the philippines mm. if i didn't decide to come over here like you know exactly it was worth it everyone like me you and ate got a better opportunity here like yeah you know. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click the like. And if you're new to this channel, please subscribe. It will definitely help boost the uh, channel. And it's so nice to always uh, leave a comment because I know I really love reading your comments. And if you want to suggest anything, please do. We are very open to all your suggestions. So thank you very much again for joining us. And I will see you again soon, probably just on my own without Gail. So, bye!